Three words to sum up the ocean. Okay. Calm, power, and just nature. That's what comes to me. I think there's a lot. So let's talk about it more the next time you come swimming out here at Tower 26, Charlotte. I'm not a practiced churchgoer, but when I come down to the Pacific Ocean, that's my church. It is spiritual, never ending, and usually very forgiving. Spectacular healing and awing. I'm in awe of the ocean. Three words that sum up the ocean. Energy, power, and consistency. Magical, huge, home. Magic, mystic, and uh, spiritual. Energizing, boundless, unpredictable. Dark, cold, and expansive. Moody, mysterious, motion. They were all M's, alliterated quite a bit, unintentionally. <laughs> So welcome on board to this podcast about ocean swimming and the many stories of the people who choose to take part. My name's Charlotte Coker and I moved to Santa Monica, California from London, England. I guess you can already tell from the accent. So until I moved to the West Coast, I was always a pool swimmer. But ocean swimming without a doubt has changed my life and the many people I speak to at the beach say the same. So to give you a picture of what Santa Monica Beach looks like, well, You've got this vast, white, sandy beach. It stretches for miles. It's met by this beautiful blue Pacific Ocean. And on a clear day, you can sometimes see Catalina Island. There can be big surf. This coast is known for surfing. But this hasn't deterred it from being a popular swim location. So, my three words to describe the ocean would have to be alive, nurturing, magnificent. To give you more depth to why I chose these words, well, to stay alive, we can't actually live without the ocean. We need this on our planet. I find it nurturing during tough times, especially in 2020. And finally, magnificent. This beautiful blue, vast mass of water, without a doubt, is an incredibly dramatic place. It's a place for swimmers and the basis of their many stories, which kind of led to this podcast. So my first initial thought of ocean swimming, well, it wasn't a great one. I was like, you can't swim here. There's surf. I mean, how do you get under the waves? And the waves actually petrified me. A local called Sean remembers my first ocean swim attempt very well. My name is Sean Bernardini. I live in Santa Monica. I've been swimming in the ocean since I was probably about uh, 10 or 12 years old. While I would think I'm a patient person, I guess um, I'm probably not. And um, I was surprised that um, such a good swimmer was uncomfortable going under waves. And so after my teaching techniques were failing, I just yelled at her and I said, dive under the fucking wave, God damn it. So not one to give up easily. You know, I, I'd like to give it another go. So I remember those famous words from Eleanor Roosevelt, do one thing every day that scares you. So the next weekend, I headed back to Lifeguard Tower 26, a place that's renowned for ocean swimmers in Santa Monica Beach. I bought a secondhand wetsuit for $25 from another swimmer, and I joined a meetup group. They toes in every weekend at 9 a.m. and led by a very courageous swimmer called Brian. And I say this as I've seen him head out in six foot plus waves. And it literally, it was so strong, the surf, I saw him dragged half a tower down just trying to get in once. My name is Brian Guevara. I am the host of the meetup.com group here at Tower 26. They call me the fearless leader. I don't know why, but basically I host a meetup.com group here and it's the intention of the group is um, to have everybody who wants to swim in the ocean come and join us and give it a shot. So. We come here on Saturdays and Sundays, and we test our metal every day at every skill level, so. And then at the beach, I met another Brit called Claire, who's become a great friend here. Here's her swim story. Hi, I'm Claire Randall. I am a yoga teacher, and I live in Santa Monica, California, and I'm also an ocean swimmer. How I first started ocean swimming was with Brian's meetup group, and what 
made me first look at ocean swimming was I was just having a little bit of a bit of a hard time. I was going through a breakup, and um, even though we were we were good friends still, it was just um, things. Life was changing, and I was starting to feel a little bit like I was losing control of my current life situation and maybe losing a little bit of purpose and I also wanted a community feeling which is quite hard to find sometimes in LA so I decided to look if there was an ocean swimming meetup group and it turned out there was so I went to the first one it was at 8 a.m. start and I walked there on my own and I was really really nervous and then I nearly turned back around and went home but I carried on walking and Brian was so welcoming definitely down and thanks to Brian that I continued doing it because if he hadn't have been so welcoming and he kept checking on me when we were swimming and checking I was okay and saying things like if you need to go back in just raise your hand let me know and I'll stay by you I'll keep checking in with you because it's quite it's so different to swimming in the pool so so different and it's really daunting or it was for me at first um, because it's uh, the unknown out there. The group that we are taking out is that person who's never been in the in the water to that person who's been swimming collegiate um, for a long time is just getting back into it or there are people who just love swimming of all of all skill sets so basically there is no prerequisite the prerequisite here is that you are willing to come and swim with a group that has different skill level sets and so what we find is people sort themselves out naturally I don't think I'd slept well the night before because I was nervous and I kept waking up thinking so tired when I got there and by the time I came out, bearing in mind I was probably only in there about 45 minutes, maximum an hour, I felt just high on life. <laughs> you really don't need drugs to feel high. You can go in the ocean and swim and you'll feel like the, the, the sky seems bluer. You're noticing things. This sounds, I don't know, really kind of hippy-dippy, but you'll notice like nature more or the birds or you know when I swim in the ocean I like to turn on my back um, and look up at the sky especially if I start to feel panicky at all or like I can't breathe properly or I haven't got my breathing pattern right I'll just turn on my back and look up at the sky and there's really not much that's more calming than that and more I think it's really good for you mentally because so much of our you know uh, anxieties or upset or frustrations is nearly pretty much always ego driven so when you go out in the ocean it's this vast world you know, it's like being on a different planet at Santa Monica Beach in 2020 there were 10 times as many swimmers as swimming pools were closed due to COVID regulations so the swimmers came to the ocean Brian Guevara explains how the meetup group is expanding. The group is growing, right? So I do have another co-host, but we really do like talk about safety. And, and I think this year we're going to really focus on the buddy system and things like that, right? Because we want to be really responsible with, with just introducing the ocean because it is so powerful. Um, and each season has its own challenges, right? It's, it's cold in the winter, and so it can be very, um, you know, you can be overwhelmed if you're not really careful. but. It is absolutely rewarding. Every swimmer I speak to has a story. And this is why Brian swims. So when I'm swimming out there, I think a lot of people are swimming for different reasons. And so I wanted to share one of the reasons um, that I swim, obviously it's for health and everything, but in 2015, me and my wife had a little baby. We knew something was wrong from the beginning of the pregnancy, but we were able to um, continue with the pregnancy. Things were starting to resolve. And um, long story short, around seven months, we ended up having an emergency C-section, and Sophie was her name, uh, was in the NICU for about three and a half weeks. After three and a half weeks, we did everything that we could. Uh, we had that come to Jesus moment with the leadership at the hospital, and they told us that there was nothing else that we could do, and Sophie passed in our arms, and um, I had her subsequently cremated, and then I chartered a boat, to do the ashes at sea ceremony and um, knowing that Sophie's in the ocean 
is is very calming for me because sometimes you know our little monkey brains tend to think about things we shouldn't be thinking about in the ocean but um you know i imagine that sophie's riding on my back keeping everything away from me and uh and then that moment you know subsides and then we continue swimming so i think that's important to uh to talk about everybody that we meet's got a story behind them that is uh, my story and i'm very thankful uh, that I have Sophie and everybody else like you, Charlotte, to swim out here. You're listening to The Pod, a selection of swim stories. So wave diving has always been my greatest fear of the ocean. As I stand at the water's edge, I'll see if I can spot a set coming on the horizon. If it looks like there's a gap between the surf sets, I'll sprint as fast as possible to pass the break. But who better to ask for advice on how to deal with the waves than a local champion body surfer? Here's his swim story. My name is Vitas. I swim in the ocean here at Tower 26 in Santa Monica, California. I learned how to swim here. I grew up swimming in Tower 26. My uncle was a lifeguard here, and he would bring me out on surfboards when I was a kid, and I've been coming to this beach for almost 40 years. I always loved swimming and boogie boarding in the waves, and the ocean was always such a great source of joy for me, and I just remember seeing people that could ride the waves without any boards, and I wanted to do that. to be like a dolphin and I wanted to be able to ride the waves without anything but my body and I was lucky enough to be around people that taught me how to do that and body surfing for me is like the purest form of wave riding it's being in the wave not on top of the wave and the cool thing about being in a wave is that you get to feel the energy of the water that comes from thousands of miles away like some of these waves come from storms and you know in the Alaskan Gulf or across the Pacific and these waves travel so many miles to be able to feel that energy of our earth with my body in the water is there's no other feeling like it when there's big waves in the ocean it's always important to have a, a deep respect for our ocean because the waves are powerful and if you're not respectful or if you're not a little bit afraid of big waves like then something's wrong when you're getting out in waves you always want to make sure to just keep your eye on the water never turn your back on the water and when big waves come you want to dive underneath them and you know some people make it through the waves some people don't just the more you're in the waves the more you're in the water the more you get a feel for the ocean and, and that's really what it is just over the years for being in this particular water for 40 years like I have a feel for the water here. The whole swim experience can still be quite scary but you feel so good when you come out of the swim. The adrenaline rush and all those endorphins just make you feel high on life. So at the start of 2020 when pools were closed and the world went into lockdown I became founding member of a swim pod and we called ourselves Team Rogue. Why the name? Well I guess we just decided to do our own thing. We literally went rogue. And it was ocean swimming that became our focus. So at 6 a.m. every morning in 2020, I'd meet these other rogue swimmers. The background noise you're gonna hear is the general beach traffic. You know, there's a bike path next to us and lots of other things going on because, you know, we're at the beach. So uh, just bear with me. My name is Ben Tillotson. I do policy at TikTok and I'm an open water ocean swimmer. I started swimming with Team Rogue I think in March or April, when everything shut down for the pandemic, um, I was going a little stir crazy. I knew that people did open water swimming in LA and wanted to give it a try. And so I posted and asked if people were still going. And I got a direct message from Charlotte saying like, shh, yes, uh, we, meet, we meet at the parking lot at 6 a.m. and without having swam in months and months and months I showed up to my first one with this crew of four other people um, didn't really know how experienced good swimmers they all were so I would enter the water with them and then slowly watch them disappear into the horizon um, and then meet up again for coffee at the end of the swim 
Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Christine Hammond. Well, I started ocean swimming because I ripped my knee out and I needed to rehab myself. So I started master swimming again. And then I found that I love the ocean even more. So I almost stopped swimming in the pool and replaced that with the ocean. We all motivate each other every morning. It's a beautiful group of rogue swimmers that gather and we push each other to go beyond what we think we can even when we're tired and we're not feeling our best we really motivate each other to uh, to excel and it's really amazing how much we've grown as friends and as swimmers. My name is Kurt Kingsett and I sell real estate in the Los Angeles area but I also ocean swim which has been keeping my sanity lately. Yeah, so Team Rogue has been a lifesaver in a lot of different ways. Uh, when the pandemic hit and shut everything down, my only source of exercise pretty much has been the ocean. And I've gotten much stronger, much better. And, and I really wouldn't do a lot of these swims. Even today, I, I didn't really want to swim, but I get in and because I've got two or three people around me pushing me. Yeah, it's kept my sanity. Uh, I figured last year I calculated roughly I swam about 300 miles and that was rough. I probably swam a little more, but that's swimming from Santa Monica to Las Vegas. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know who does that. But actually Sam, I met him at CrossFit. He started last year and he, he was okay, but now he's keeping up and actually passing some of us up in the swimming. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm uh, currently a MBA student at USC. I swim with no wetsuit currently and um, people say it's cold. Uh, I think that the water is not cold, it's, it's your mind that makes it cold, and so I do the, the no wetsuit as kind of like a, a mental fortitude training just to um, get a little bit tougher, to also to get tan, that's a huge important piece for me. Um, also I think the dolphins are, you know, less scared of uh, people wearing no wetsuits. They're like, oh, this is a sea creature as well, not some like wrapped up land creature. Yeah. My name is Lee. I wasn't here all of 2020. I was in Arizona because I lost my parents in 2020. So when I did come back from time to time, I immediately hooked up with Chris Dane and Team Rogue so we could go swimming in the ocean because I was following their adventures when I was in Arizona as to all the antics. We all actually just come from a lot of different walks of life, but in the ocean, we're all at the same level. So that's where we have our uh, common ground. My name is Bodhi and um, well, I, I work in film and television, but I also am a amateur triathlete. I have completed three Ironmans. Some of the characters in Team Rogue would be, so you have Kurt, he's got this big hat that you can identify from probably a mile away on the beach, so you know when Kurt's there, because his hat is there on the beach, and he stands about 6'5 or something, he's really tall. Um, and then you've got Christy, who's just an enthusiastic ball of energy. So she's rad. That's Christine. Then there's Sam. Sam is this character that comes out of the ocean looking like Poseidon, you know, with this like big beard and just grizzly guy. He doesn't wear a wetsuit. He's in these little um, um, speedo shorts and, and just rocks it. Um, he's amazing. That's Sam. I mean, if I'm starting to shiver in the water, uh... That's definitely uh, uh, when I start to think, well, yeah, maybe it's time to get out. Because there's also the after drop of when you get out of the water, especially like in the winter time, the air is not always warm. Hi, my name is Kim O'Grady. I'm an open water swimmer and also a competitive swimmer. We got shut down here in LA. So we started going in at the crack of dawn. I remember the first time doing it, I was like so scared because it's dark. But then it's like, we're swimming with Joelle, who's not wearing goggles. <laughs> and I was like, let's just go for it. And it was super fun. Kim. Kim is uh, one of the Rogue members that no one can keep up with. Maybe except a gentleman who is also a member, I think, John Moffat. He's pretty fast. He's competed in a thing called the Olympics, so he's, he knows how to swim pretty well. Uh, my name's John Moffat. Uh, I'm an ocean swimmer here in Southern California. Um, I grew up here. Um, I'm also a two-time Olympian many, many, many years ago. And I swim because it feels good, and I love it. In my life, I've done a lot of swimming in a pool. And swimming in a pool is really good for fitness, and there's also the really, really good friends that you get 
along the way. But there's something different about swimming in the ocean. Um, you know, you're at the whim of the mood of the ocean. Um, you know, you, one day you might be lucky enough and you're swimming with a pod of dolphin and you hear them before you see them. You know, just these little magical things happen. I was going through it like everybody else at the beginning of the pandemic, struggling to try to find new ways to try to stay fit and sane. I just texted Chris, it's like, hey, listen, are you ocean swimming? She says, yeah, I'm ocean swimming with this group. And so I joined you and it became this funny, eclectic group and it brought us together. And it's something that uh, I have really looked forward to. And I think it's really kind of kept me sane. Absolutely. If I didn't have those mornings, um, it kept me on some kind of uh, healthy routine. It kept me in a workout situation. It kept me uh, with friends. So I had a social outlet without endangering myself because, again, it was a nice environment that we were able to still socially distance while we were doing our workout. It probably saved our lives, many of us, physically, emotionally, and mentally. I'm Charlotte Coker, and you're listening to The Pod, a selection of swim stories recorded at Santa Monica Beach in California. So I remember that first ocean swim with Olympian and Emmy Award winner John Moffat. And actually, John has started his own podcast called Sports Life Balance, which I'd highly recommend. So the benefits of ocean swimming. We always hear about how cold water helps boost immune systems how it increases metabolism and enhances our moods. I guess that explains why I was so happy in 2020. And swimming in salt water. Well, if you research this, the list of benefits are endless. The ocean is rich in magnesium. Seawater helps release stress. It relaxes your muscles, promotes deep sleep. Swimming in the sea has been said to stimulate the parasympathetic system, which is responsible for rest and repair. It helps trigger the release of dopamine and serotonin. And right now, we all need more of those. So I asked the swim pod what they thought the benefits were from swimming in the ocean. It's me very meditative in the way that I can clear whatever I have in my mind that I need to focus on or a problem I need to work through, what I need to do for the day. It helps to for me to organize my thoughts, to clear things that I don't need, and to really problem solve while I'm in the water. It's very hypnotic in that way that it's solution. In yoga, they always tell us that water is solution. If you want to solve a problem when you go to bed at night, you should put water on or a fountain. And I found that same remedy happens while I'm swimming. It provides solution for me through the motion of the swimming. When you swim, there's kind of a meditative element to it. Just like when you're riding a bike or running, or um, you get you get sort of like lulled into your own being, and it's not it's not like your mind is blank. Your brain's still working in there. It's at rest, and you're you're awake. And you know, as long as you can get to a space where you're not too cold, and you're not too uncomfortable, you're not too worried about the waves, or you don't freak yourself out about sharks or whatever. We can all freak ourselves out about because you can't see anything really and I think that's the other thing that sensory deprivation is something I think that really lends itself to just really kind of having some time for yourself even though we're with this group you know we all go do this because it's something that nourishes us and something that's kind of in many ways perhaps even sort of rescued us emotionally. Oh, definitely. The, the swimming has helped me get through 2020. I think social aspect of just having people to talk to very important to my mental health and uh, I mean we're not like getting within six feet really like the beach is huge. I think if I didn't do this I would definitely be in a a different state of mind. I wouldn't be as I don't know I wouldn't have a such a great disposition or great outlook that really helps uh, that for sure and, and, the, and the, honestly a, a lot of this I wouldn't do if I didn't have the group around me Team Rogue it really has helped me in so many ways because when I see Christine get in the water and she's like, are you swimming today? I should not use that voice. <laughs> she's gonna kill me. She goes, are you swimming? I go, yeah. So she'll get in there and just literally, you know, kick my butt in, in a good way. And I always say, I come down here when I don't want to swim and then I always get out and I'm better off for it and I feel better. So finding open water swimming was a crucial part of 2020. COVID sanity. I'm a runner. 
And with everything else that shut down, like yoga studios and gyms, um, my body was falling apart, replacing running with all those other activities that I used to do. And then I found swimming and it is enjoyable in a way that is very different from running. Running's really intense, you're hot, you're sweaty, you have to pay attention to where you're stepping all the time and it's like sensory overload with your body and everything you have to look at. And then swimming is the opposite. You get into the water, you can't hear anything um, other than the sound of your stroke. Oh yeah, I swim because it uh, blocks out all the noise. I Sometimes I just like to go out there and float, especially with a wetsuit, you can just sit there and float and it just tunes everything out, all the noise, because in Southern California, there's nothing but noise out here. There's always a plane or a siren or a car alarm or a dog. And when you're out in the ocean, there's nothing. So there's been many memorable moments with Team Rogue, as Christine recalls. I think the most memorable moment was when a pod of dolphins came right under and through us and actually brushed up against Juliana and they encircled us and communed with us. So we had the closest connection with them that I've ever had. And it was probably the most magical experience I've ever had in my life. I'm swimming in and it's, it's a pretty good wave. The wave actually picked me up and brought me down on my feet were on the ground and something was between my legs. I thought it was Christine for a second because it was pretty big and I'm like, what is going on here? And I, I think it was a shark of some sort because it, it, whatever the tail was hit my, my calf and it's kind of sore right now, but it was a, I think it was a leopard shark. So you're listening to the pod, a swim story. When I started swimming, it was just the waves that I was scared of. But for many swimmers, it's other sea creatures. Back at Santa Monica Beach, the fearless leader Brian Guevara recalls some safety tips for ocean swimming. I think it's important, first of all, obviously, like you want to have some kind of baseline conditioning of the ocean and education of the ocean. And there's the rescue that was like right on time. A lot of it is really just taking your time because the dynamics of the ocean completely different than the pool. So you can have a very confident pool swimmer um, who will, you know, who has a very difficult time transitioning into the water. It's a very natural thing. If you, if you don't respect the ocean, it's going to be really difficult. But if you do, it will be the most rewarding thing. And I promise. Claire Randall. Most of the time, I go in there with a big fear of um, mainly of sh a little bit of stingrays, but not so much them because. Um, I've started wearing my flippers, so I know that the stingrays, I think, can't get me through them. But the sharks, which I know are out there, are also, you know, statistically, it's very low. But when you're out in the ocean, or when I'm out in the ocean, I can be in my zone and I'm swimming, and then suddenly my mind will go, oh my God, shark, shark. I'm literally doing like the Jaws soundtrack in my head. Kim O'Grady. I'm actually thinking next year I might get myself hypnotized to not think about sharks. I mean, I've always swam in the ocean. I think my first race was when I was eight. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Now I'm just too concerned about it. I don't know why. Maybe because there's more sightings. The water is pretty temperate as far as, you know, risk factors. There's not a lot of, you know, um, shark activity in the area. There are stingrays. That's probably our biggest kind of fear. So um, if you do ever come out here, make, make sure to do the uh, stingray shuffle because that is um, kind of a common occurrence, um, which, you know, can definitely induce some pretty intense pain for two to three hours, which um, I hear what is not fun to go through, so. But I've always believed there's more sharks on land than in water. So I'm hearing a lot of people say how the ocean swims have helped them at work. And one of the first people I swam with was film composer Tom Heil. He actually scored the soundtrack for the film Swimming with Sharks. You've already heard some of his music in this podcast. And here he tells us how the ocean has inspired his music. Hello everyone, I'm Tom Heil. I am a film composer and also an ocean swimmer. I started ocean swimming um, a while back 
like 10 years ago. And because I wanted to do a triathlon, got up to longer distances in the pool and then started with a friend, brought me out in the ocean and just fell in love with the idea of swimming in the ocean. And it, it was just so different. There's no walls, there's just the ocean. You can keep going forever. As a composer, I think it's definitely influenced my work. I think about music all the time when I'm out there. Um, I've actually written a couple pieces for piano, one called Across the Water. There's another one called Open Water, which is more meditative and just sort of one of those gray days when you're kind of swimming and it's very calm out, um, but you kind of feel it and you feel the energy of the ocean. Thinking about ideas, I've pitched this orchestral idea to a conductor friend of a regional orchestra and um, about a project called surface tension even when the ocean is still you still feel that little subtle energy of um, the swells from different areas and things like that so i think it's definitely influenced my composing thanks tom for providing the score to this podcast and your three words to describe the ocean three words to describe the ocean Magical, majestical, and capricious. So from three words to the triple crown. This is the marathon challenge of ocean swimming. No easy feat. And during my swim story, I got to meet some of those who've taken part in one of the toughest sports. My name's Christy Serrallo. I became an ocean swimmer in 1967, which was the first time I saw the Pacific Ocean. We drove out Route 66 from the south side of Chicago. We hit the sand and I thought, boy, I never want to live anywhere else. In open water swimming, there's the Triple Crown. It's the Catalina Islands to Palos Verdes swim, the Catalina Channel, the English Channel from Dover to Calais, and around the island of Manhattan. When I turned 50, I decided that open water swimming was a little lonely. So I decided that I wanted to put together an ocean relay of six women over the age of 50, fun and fast. We are now all over 60 and we have completed the triple crown as relays. Last year, we had to cancel our swim, but in 2019, we completed the English Channel in 10 hours and 36 minutes, which set a record for women over 60, women over 50, and women over 40. And I don't even try and keep up with Christy. What I love about ocean swimming is you see all ages out there. I'm meeting up with people on the beach from beginners to national champs, and a future star of open water swimming, without a doubt, is Abby. Sometimes I join her for a second lap of her morning swims. For this specific day, I met Abby at 7 a.m. I'm Abby Bergman, and I'm an ocean and marathon swimmer based in Los Angeles, California, and also Chicago, Illinois. I just got out of the ocean in Santa Monica. We started this morning just before 5 a.m. in the dark. Um, it's now s around 7, so we were in the water for about two hours. Just warming up, so if you can hear me shaking, I apologize for that, but I'm a little shivery because I think the water's probably about 60 degrees and it's cloudy and beautiful out. I got hit by a fish today, so there's some fish in the dark. They jump out of the water and they land on us, and it's very scary in the dark, but cool. As she swam no wetsuit and the water was barely 60 Fahrenheit, which is like 15 Celsius, that's cold. Most people wouldn't be able to tolerate that for two hours. I kept checking Abby was okay and warm enough to continue our conversation, but then again, Abby has swam for much longer in the ocean than today. 
I first started ocean swimming when I was 13 as part of a junior lifeguard program. And then I read a book by Lynn Cox called Swimming to Antarctica, which made me want to do ocean and marathon swimming. So um, when I was a sophomore in college, I swam the Catalina Channel from Catalina Island to Palos Verdes. And then the following summer, I swam the English Channel. And then to complete my Triple Crown, I swam around Manhattan. So each of those is 20-ish miles and in different temperatures of water. And I try to do at least one long swim every year since then. My latest one, I swam from the tip of Malibu to the tip of Palos Verdes in September of 2020. That was 27-ish miles. It took me somewhere in the area of 16 hours. No wetsuit, just a bathing suit, cap, goggles, no neoprene, a little bit of grease. In future swim stories, I'd like to pair up marathon swimmer Lynn Cox with Abby for a discussion on ocean swimming. Together they've crossed more channels than most of us have on boats. I asked Abby what motivates her to swim. The motivation for me comes from, I think, multiple different places. I love the swimming. I'm also out there for the challenge. I love to see if I can complete the thing I set out to complete. I'm also thinking about getting to the next point or looking at the scenery or recently we've been bringing out a GoPro with us and really admiring the cloud shapes and taking pictures of the gorgeous sunrises which has been a really important feature of this year's swimming in particular. We have lights on our heads and the water's dark and glassy and periodically you see light because the crashing of the wave part is lighter than the ocean and then it sparkles when we make little bubbles with our hands. They catch any light and it's just sparkly and magical and almost glowing in a way. It's such a special experience being out in the water in the dark. It's not something I ever really thought I would do voluntarily, but it's amazing. Not one wave is the same and the people you swim with will often change from season to season. So I guess there's just one person left to ask if my ocean swim technique has improved. Well, I have to say, I met Charlotte, um, God, how long ago was that? Five years ago? Um, in fact, I was probably swimming more to, more than, I think, than you um, when I met you. And and, I th and now it's been reversed. You're out there four or five days a week, and, and I'm lucky to get out there one day a week. So, um, no, she's become a much better swimmer, stronger swimmer, and... Uh, Definitely not as fearful as you used to be, but this isn't a competition, so you don't have to go in if you're not comfortable. And with that, we wave goodbye to this week's swim pod. And for more info on the pod, head to thepodswimstory.com.